Hello everyone. This is SK Mehta, presently the president of the Indian Nuclear Society called INS. I wish to welcome you all to this INS series lectures. This series about uh, 13 lectures is aimed to acquaint you with the various aspects of the nuclear energy its utilization in various areas benefiting humanity, the limitations and the regulatory aspects in safety and protection. One of the main objectives of the INS is to promote the advancement of nuclear science and engineering and technology related to the atomic nucleus and the allied sciences and arts. With this objective, INS has been disseminating information through journals, books, reports, newsletters, seminars, and conferences. These have mainly been to keep the INS members and other scientific communities and organizations well informed about the development in the various areas of science and technology within India and world over. Or it is realized that there is a need to keep the various professionals, undergraduate students, and general public knowledgeable in their respective fields of nuclear science and engineering. For the benefit of, uh, of the public, some of the important and the common application of nuclear being for power, industrial use, medical diagnosis and treatment, agriculture, food preservation, and various other areas. This lecture series is made in simple language and illustration with the aim to inform the general viewer about the science, engineering, and technology, social benefits of the nuclear, application of nuclear carrier benefits in nuclear and regulatory and safety of the nuclear energy. The presentations are prepared and narrated by experts on each topic in a way that the viewers with no background knowledge about the nuclear science and engineering can understand. Our effort will be to constantly provide information about newer benefits to the society emerging out of the pain-taking research and nuclear science and engineers. Viewers are encouraged to comment, suggest, and put forward question to the experts. The channel of the constructive communication will always be open in INS, which is website ins-india.org. Welcome all to this wonderful lecture series by Indian Nuclear Society. There are 13 lectures on various topics related to nuclear energy and its application to societal benefits. All these lectures will cover different aspects of nuclear energy in sectors like power, medicine, agriculture and society. It illustrates in simple way the science behind nuclear reactors for all of us. Greetings to all. I am R. S. Vishwakarma, presently working in Radiological Physics and Advisory Division of Bhava Atomic Research Center, Mumbai. I will be presenting Radiation Protection and Shielding for INS Lecture Series 2022. Radiation safety is very important topic and it is necessary to provide correct information to viewers and general public to counter radiation related phobia and fear. The principle of defense in depth, redundancy and diversity are followed in the design of all the system where radiation sources are used. Safety is ensured by proper design, material selection, controlling zones of radiation, controlling collective exposure, training, inspection, monitoring, safety drills, 
plan shutdowns, upgrades, review process, and strict regulation by adopting a graded approach. The regulatory framework in our country is robust, wherein rules for safety standards, monitoring, and enforcing are well laid out. This presentation, we will discuss the general aspect of radiation protection and shielding. The outline of this lecture is as follows. We will discuss what is ionizing radiation and what is meant by radioactivity. How this ionizing radiation interacts with matter. What are commonly used radiation quantities and its units. How we all are exposed to natural background radiation continuously. What are different biological effects of ionizing radiation to humans? What are applicable radiation exposure dose limits for general public? And we will discuss principles of radiation protection by means of time, distance, shielding. In this image, we have shown electromagnetic radiation spectrum in terms of wavelength. These are larger wavelengths of the order of 10 power 3 meter and these are smaller wavelengths of the order of 10 power minus 15 meters. As we are aware that energy of photon is inversely proportional to wavelength, this photon carries lesser energy and these photons carry more energy. This image shows an atom where there is a positively charged nucleus and electrons are arranged outside in electronic shells. When photon interacts with one of the orbital electron, it may transfer part or complete energy. The electron acquires that energy and if the energy gained by this interaction by electron is more than the binding energy of electron, the electron will come out which may result in creation of a positive and negative ion. Negative ion is basically an electron and positive ion is atom where it lacks one electron. So, it, the charge on atom is positive. Any radiation which can cause this interaction, removal of this electron and creation of positive and negative ion will be termed as ionizing radiation. So, what are ionizing radiation in electromagnetic spectrum? Ultraviolet, X-ray and gamma ray. This will be ionizing radiation. Radioactivity is defined as spontaneous changes in the nucleus of an unstable atom. These changes are occurring so that the nucleus can attain stability. This results in formation of new element as the number of proton and neutrons may be different. This change is also accompanied by release of energy or particle or both. The rate of decay or number of disintegration per second is defined as activity. The SI unit of activity is Becquerel and non-SI unit is Curie. One Becquerel is equal to one change happening in the nucleus per second that is one disintegration per second. The relationship between these two units are as follows. One Curie is equal to 3.7 into 10 power 10 Becquerel, which can be defined as 1 Curie equal to 37 Giga Becquerel, where Giga is 10 power 9. A smaller unit of activity is 1 milli Curie, milli is 10 power minus 3 or 1 by 1000, will be equal to 37 Mega Becquerel, where Mega is equal to 10 power 6 or 1 million. Even smaller unit of activity is 1 micro curie and that can be equated to 37 kilo Becquerel. This slide we will discuss interaction of radiation with matter. 
let us say the incident particle is photon. So, gamma photon interacts with matter and transfer some or all of its energy to the electron resulting in excitation and annihilation of the matter. The energy carried by ejected electron may also cause subsequent secondary annihilation of the matter provided the energy carried by the ejected electron is more than the average energy required for annihilation in that medium. For example, the average energy required for annihilation of air is about 34 E. This picture presents the structure of atom. This is a nucleus carrying positive charge and electrons are orbiting this nucleus. Let us say one photon is incident on this atom. It interacts with this orbital electron, transfer a part of its energy. The electron absorbs the energy and goes to higher orbit as shown here. It is still part of the atom. This process will be termed as excitation of atom. In another case, let us say one more photon is incident on this atom. It interacts with this orbital electron and transfers energy more than the binding energy of this orbital electron. The electron goes out resulting in creation of negative ion and positive ion. This process will be termed as annihilation of atom. The same process can happen if the incident particle is electron or any other charged particle. Energy of ionizing radiation is defined in unit of electron volt. The ionizing radiation has energy of the order of kilo electron volt and above. As this ionizing radiation is depositing some energy in the matter while they interact with matter, the energy imparted per unit mass of matter will be called as absorbed dose. Its unit is gray. The SI unit of absorbed dose is joule per kg. The absorbed dose weighted for biological effect of different types of radiation will be defined as equivalent dose. The quantity is equivalent dose. Its unit is C volt. This is required as different type of radiation causes different types of biological effect in tissue. So, equivalent is defined as absorbed dose multiplied by radiation weighting factor. Effective dose. Effective dose is weighted for susceptibility to biological effect of different tissue types. In human, different organ system, different tissue type, the effect will be different for same type of radiation. In order to account for it, effective dose is equivalent dose multiplied by tissue weighting factor. Its unit is C volt. All living beings on earth are exposed continuously to very small amount of ionizing radiation present in the environment. This radiation is always around us whether we are indoor, outdoor, sleeping or working, eating or traveling. In summary, we are living with radiation. The source of this background radiation are a terrestrial origin existing since the creation of earth, b cosmic origin mainly from cosmos and sun, c man-made due to human action. This pie chart shows the contribution of various components in background radiation to which we are all continuously exposed. The natural radiation sources contribute around 82 percent of which radon which is a radioactive gas emitted from soil, rock, construction material is around 55 percent. The internally deposited radionuclide contributes 11 percent. The gamma form 
terrestrial is around 8% and we get around 8% source from cosmic radiation. The man-made radiation sources contribute close to 18%. The consumer product gives around 3%. The major component of man-made radiation comes from the medical exposure of public that includes medical x-rays such as chest x-ray, dental x-ray, CT scan, angiograms and from other application of radiation we get only 1%. In the slide we will discuss how radioactivity enters humans through food. The soil contains a small amount of naturally occurring radionuclide. The plants may take up this as a part of their nutrient. We consume food obtained from plant-based source such as grains, cereals, vegetables, fruit. A small activity will be transferred by this route to humans. Animals also consume the vegetation. From soil and crops it will go to animal and from animal it will come to human. Similarly, the water bodies also contain dissolved mineral and radionuclide. The fish and seafood may uptake this very small amount of radionuclide and if humans consume fish or seafood, it will come to us. Potassium-40 is a major constituent of natural activity found in food. The internal doses due to food water ingestion are caused mainly by radial isotope potassium 40, we define as symbol K and 40 is mass number. K40 is a radioactive isotope of potassium having a long half life of 1.25 billion years. It makes up to 0.012% that is 120 ppm of the total amount of potassium found in nature. For an average person of 60 kg body weight, potassium 40 would have activity about 3600 patrols. The radioactivity in milk is 200 times more than that in drinking water. This slide highlights the content of naturally occurring radioactive K40 in different food items. There are several potassium rich food such as banana, avocado, coconut water, leafy vegetable and many more. Of this potassium rich food, a small percentage will be radioactive potassium that is K40. This table represents the activity content of K40 in unit of Bacterial per kg. So, you can see if you consume leafy vegetable, you may get two up to 220 Bacterial per kg of K40. So, any food item you consume with each bite, you are uptaking a very small amount of radioactivity such as potassium-40 in your body. As mentioned earlier, the background radiation to which we all are exposed continuously has a cosmic ray component. The radiation dose rate from cosmic rays is altitude dependent. As the altitude increases, the cosmic radiation dose rate also increases. At sea level, the dose rate from cosmic radiation is about 
zero point zero three microsievert per hour, where microsievert is unit of effective or equivalent dose. As the altitude increases, the dose rate from cosmic rays keep on increasing. The commercial flights fly at about ten kilometer above sea level. Let us say a passenger is traveling by flight, and his flight duration is two hours. He, that passenger may receive ten micro sieverts during his flight. Ionizing radiation, when they interact with human tissue, may cause excitation and ionization in tissue, resulting in some biological effect. The biological effects are categorized mainly in two types: one, stochastic biological effect, and another, deterministic biological effect. As name suggests, stochastic, these effects are probabilistic in nature. means effect may or may not occur at all chances of an effect increases with increasing dose the deterministic effect are certain in nature effect will occur if dose received is more than threshold dose the threshold dose is different for different biological effects this effect occurs at high dose received in short time provided the dose received is more than threshold for that biological effect the high dose received in short time is called as acute exposure the severity of deterministic effect increases with the dose in india use of radiation sources is regulated by Atomic Energy Regulatory Board (AERB). AERB prescribes radiation annual dose limits for general public as well as occupational workers. These limits are adopted from International Commission on Radiological Protection (ICRP) Report 103. The effective dose limit for whole body of general public is one millisievert in a year. Equivalent dose limit for islands of general public is 15 millisievert in a year. Equivalent dose limit for kin of general public is 50 millisievert in a year. The dose limits prescribed by AERB are for chronic exposure, which means low dose and low dose rate. No significant increase in incidence of stochastic effect has been observed in workers occupationally exposed to radiation. The worker may get exposed to chronic exposure, which is low dose and low dose rate exposure. Detectable biological effects are only found in acute exposure above threshold dose. acute exposure means high dose in high dose rate worldwide average of natural background radiation in a year is 2.4 millisievert this is a chronic exposure which means exposure is received in low dose and low dose rate conditions annual dose permitted for general public on and above natural background radiation is 1 millisievert you can see that the annual dose limit for general public is less than half of natural background radiation that all personnel receives in a year for acute exposure means high dose and high dose rate conditions above 100 millisievert chromosomal aberration can be detected in exposed person if the dose received is 100 millisievert via chronic exposure chromosomal aberration will not be detected the biological effect for chronic exposure and acute exposures are somewhat different at very high dose such as 
1000 millisieverts that also acute exposure radiation sickness appears in exposed person this chart is illustrative representation of radiation dose limit the general public dose limit as prescribed by atomic energy regulatory board is 1 millisievert in a year on and above natural background radiation dose the natural background radiation dose is 2.4 millisievert per year these are chronic exposure if 100 times more exposure is received in a shorter period the dose received by person will be 100 millisievert this dose can result in chromosomal aberration which can be detected by blood test a very high dose of 1000 millisievert received through acute exposure can result in radiation sickness in exposed person you can see the dose limit of general public is quite small as compared to the dose where biological effect can be observed in exposed person radiation protection can be ensured by use of time distance and shielding principle train manpower for handling and application of radiation sources adhering to safe practice routine radiation monitoring at installation compliance with radiation dose limit by means of personal monitoring it may be noted that use of radiation sources is regulated by atomic energy regulatory board aerb in india radiation hazard control to reduce radiation exposure as mentioned earlier we can use principle of time distance and shielding we need to limit time spent in radiation source less time spent in the radiation source will result in less dose received by person by increasing distance radiation dose received by person can be reduced also by using appropriate shielding the radiation received by person can be reduced radiation hazard control by time principle less time spent near the source will result in less radiation received by person so dose received will be equal to dose rate from the source multiplied by time spent in the radiation field this is a source and there is a person a person who spends 1 hour in the radiation field of 5 micro sievert per hour may receive 5 micro sievert another person spending 2 hour in the field may receive 10 micro sievert similarly if a person spends half an hour he may receive only 2.5 micro sievert radiation hazard control by means of distance principle more distance from the source will result in lesser radiation received by person radiation intensity is inversely proportional to square of the distance from the source let us say this is a source we are aware of radiation dose rate at distance d1 radiation dose rate at distance d2 can be estimated by using this formula dose rate at distance d2 will be equal to dose rate at distance d1 multiplied by d1 by d2 whole square for example let us say at distance d1 equal to 1 meter dose rate is 100 micro sievert per hour we are interested in finding dose rate at distance d2 that is 2 meter by substituting values in this equation dose rate at distance d2 will be equal to 100 micro sievert per hour multiplied by 
1 meter by 2 meter whole square. The value will be 25 microsieverts per hour. You can see that as the distance from the source is doubled, radiation level is 4 times lesser. If distance is 3 times more, the radiation level will be 9 times less. Similarly, if distance is 10 times, that is a 10 meter distance, radiation intensity will be 100 times less, dose rate will be 1 microsievert per hour. Similarly, if a person moves close to the source, radiation level will be more. For example, at 50 centimeter, the dose rate at 50 centimeter will be equal to 100 microsievert multiplied by 100 cm by 50 cm whole square. Dose rate at 50 centimeter will be 4 times more and will be equal to 400 microsievert per hour. Therefore, it is advisable to maintain as much distance possible from the source. Radiation hazard control by shielding principle. Different types of radiation such as alpha, beta, gamma interact differently in matter. Alpha can easily stop by piece of paper. For beta, we may require low atomic number shielding such as plastic. Beta can easily stop by steel, plastic. Whereas for gamma radiation, it can travel more distance and the preferred shielding material for gamma radiation is lead. When ionizing radiation interacts with matter, some of the ionizing radiation will get absorbed and some will get scattered. So, we can say materials attenuate the radiation. More shielding will result in lesser radiation transmitted. Alpha particle cause excitation and ionization in matter and lose all their energy that is absorbed even in material of small thickness like paper. For beta particle, they cause excitation, ionization and they also produce X-rays. X-ray production will be higher in higher atomic number materials such as lead and tungsten. Therefore, low atomic number materials such as plastic and aluminum are best suited for stopping beta particle as X-ray production is not significant. For X-rays and gamma rays, high atomic number materials are required for shielding. High atomic number materials are required as probability of absorption of photon is more in high atomic number material. The high atomic number material are lead having atomic number 82 tungsten having atomic number 74. From structural point of view, concrete is considered for shielding of gamma and X-ray facilities. For low energy application such as diagnostic X-ray installation where the energy of X-rays will be lesser than 150 kilo electron volt, a 9 inch brick wall is adequate. For high energy application such as radiotherapy installation using X-ray and gamma ray sources having energy million electron volt, concrete is used as a shielding material and the wall thickness of enclosure will be of the order of meter depending upon the dimension of room. Summary of this talk, we all are living with radiation around us. On an average, we receive 2.4 millisieverts from background radiation in a year. There is no direct observable effect at low dose and low dose rates of radiation. Radiation sources are being handled by trained manpower in radiological safety. The facility where radiation sources are used are approved by regulatory body and they had 
adequate structural shielding so that outside the shield radiation levels are negligible. We have robust regulation regulating the use of radiation sources. The nuclear energy is quite useful to mankind and there are several applications of nuclear energy such as in healthcare, in agriculture, in environmental sciences, in industry and for power generation. So, I hope you all enjoy this lecture. Do not miss other lectures from Indian Nuclear Society. If you have any questions, 